holiday number 66 of 2021 in the middle of Shanghai and five other of the city. As it plays the court, I still appeal with Advocate Marondes in this matter. <clears throat> May it please you, my Lord, I appear for applicants one, two, and three. As the court pleases, my Lord, sir, I appear on behalf of applicant number five and six. I'm also standing in for applicant number four in the absence of Mr. Patella as arranged before. As the court pleases. Yes, Mr. As my Lord, please. Lord, I understand my learned friend wishes to hand up some documents. I, I agreed that I'd give him that opportunity. I, I can't hear you. Oh, sorry, my Lord. My learned friend for the state wishes to hand up some documents to your Lordship. I agreed that uh, I would uh, await my address until he has done that. Yes, um, your Lordship is just a record of proceedings um, in the lower court for the fourth applicant. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Most of it, your Lordship, is just exhibits. Mr. Engelbrecht, you are standing in for Mr. Lord, if I can recall, that issue was already addressed during our last appearance, and the parties have agreed that such documents be made part of the record. As the court pleases. Okay. <clears throat> As my Lord pleases. <clears throat> Lord, we have submitted our heads, our learned friends, for the other applicants, and obviously for the state have done so as well. Uh, we received the heads for the state, my lord, uh, last evening. We've looked at what has been said and based, in a sense, on all what is uh, contained in all the heads. What I intend doing today, my lord, is not repeating what is contained in our heads. That's already before your Lordship. What I inst instead doing, my Lord, is to use this opportunity to highlight certain issues. Lord, may I begin with a trite proposition? And that has been prompted to a large extent, my Lord, by the approach adopted by the state in their heads of argument in the cases they have relied on and the information they have presented. Lord, the decision, uh, the, the tight proposition, my Lord, is this. The decision as to whether or not an accused person should be granted bail in, is quintessentially, my Lord, a judicial function. The judicial officer, after considering all the circumstances relevant to a bail application exercises a discretion. And I emphasize that, my Lord, because in a sense, the core question in a bail application is this. Will the grant of bail, lie, or, or will the refusal of bail likely to, uh, I beg your pardon, will the grant of bail likely to prejudice the ends of justice? Lord, may I refer, Lord, to paragraph 16 of our heads, my Lord. That is effectively a quotation from <coughs> the judgment in State versus Atchison. Your Lordship will see that at page 10, paragraph 16 of our heads, where Justice... Mohammed said the following, my Lord, an accused cannot be kept in detention pending his trial as a form of anticipatory punishment. The presumption of the law is that he is innocent until his guilt has been established in court. 
The court will therefore ordinarily grant bail to an accused person unless this is likely to prejudice the ends of justice. Now, my Lord, I emphasize that because in the heads of argument, especially of the state, what one finds is massive passages in which the issue of the public interest and the administration of justice are dealt with. My Lord, what is important about what Justice Muhammad said in, in that passage I've just quoted is that he puts that requirement that the, uh, the, the bail will be refused if it's to the prejudice of the ends of justice, even before Section 61 of the, of the Criminal Procedure Act as it now reads, was enacted. Now, my Lord, I, I just make this point that in the Gustavo judgment, Justice Ustazen makes the point that at the end of the day, that has always been a criterion, but what Section 61 has done is to formalize that. Now, I put that up front, my Lord, for one particular reason, that this is not a new requirement. It's always been a requirement. And that's exactly what Justice Muhammad was saying, that an accused may meet all the criteria that are required, but, for example, if there is a serious risk that he will commit a further crime, or if there is a serious risk that he will not attend his trial, then, and, and if proper uh, conditions could not be put on that, then in that case, bail may be refused or bail should be refused. But that's the basic proposition. But my Lord, may I also then ask your Lordship, oh my Lord, may I hand up to your Lordship a bundle of authorities that we have referred to, so if your Lordship uh, needs to look at them while uh, I refer to any of them, your Lordship has them available. We'll see that in that coat I've, I've already set out that Basis Muhammad says the presumption of the law is that an accused is innocent until his guilt has been established in court. Now, again, my lord, what is relevant is that Justice Muhammad was, in a sense, quoting Article 12.1d of the Constitution because that's exactly what uh, Article 12.1d says are the requirements for a fair trial for an accused. So effectively, the Atchison judgment articulates two particular issues. One is one must have regard to the constitutional requirements in a matter like the discretion to be exercised in a bail application. But the second is that the law has always said that bail is effectively a delicate balance between the interests of society and the interests of the individual. My Lord, may I ask your Lordship to look at paragraph, uh, page 10 of the Atchison judgment, my Lord. <clears throat> Where the point is made, my lord, page ten, page ten uh, of of the judgment, your lordship will see that it is uh, the pages are reflected in the middle of the pages, mm -hmm. right at the top of page ten, as it reads, my lord. 
It is said, the constitution of a nation is not simply a statute which me mechanically defines the structures of government and the relations between the government and the governed. It is a mirror reflecting the, na the, the national soul, the identification of the ideals and aspirations of a nation, the articulation of the values bonding its people and disciplining its government. The spirit and tenor of the Constitution must therefore preside over and permeate the processes of judicial interpretation and judicial discretion. Then, Leonard Judge continues, crucial to that tenor and that spirit is its insistence upon the protection of prote uh, personal liberty in Article 7, the respect for human dignity in Article 8, the right of an accused to be brought to trial within a reasonable time in Article, uh, Article 12 1B and the presumption of innocence in Article 12 1D. Now, Lord, I submit it is necessary to put that in perspective when one is, and I'm not going to do it now, my Lord, when one is looking at the question, is it in the interests of justice? Is it in the interests of the administration of justice? But for now, my Lord, may I ask your Lordship to then look at paragraph 17 of our heads, where, as set out in the judgment of uh, Justice Muhammad after he, he makes the point, my Lord, about what... Uh, uh, what an accused would uh, ab about the requirements that need to be met, namely that the person must meet his trial. He points out, my Lord, and that again is at page 19, there are three essential questions, and we have summarized those questions, my Lord, at paragraph 17 of our heads. And those questions are, is it more likely that an accused will stand his trial, or is it more likely that he will abscond and forfeit his bail? And, my Lord, we've articulated in the, um, in, in the footnote, uh, paragraph 11, the matters that are taken into account, namely the applicant's roots in the country, his assets, his means of flu uh, uh, fleeing, the travel documents, the strength of the case, and the stringency of bail conditions may, that may be uh, employed uh, or imposed. And then the second is, is there a reasonable likelihood that if released, the accused will tamper with witnesses or interfere with the relevant evidence or cause such evidence to be suppressed? And there, my Lord, the issues are articulated at uh, footnote 12. We have the uh, 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 witnesses made statements. What is the relationship they have accused to the witness? And may conditions be imposed that will ensure that there isn't any uh, undue communication. And the third issue, my Lord, is how prejudicial it might be for the accused in all the circumstances to be kept in custody by being denied bail. And my Lord, there the matters that are relevant are how long has the accused been in custody, uh, custody, how much longer will he be in custody, the cause of delay in the completion of the trial, the extent of the accused needs to keep working to meet his financial obligations, the extent of prejudice in engaging legal assistance, and the health of the accused or, or the health of the applicant. Now, my Lord, these are matters that the applicants have addressed in their heads. But why they are relevant to this issue, my Lord, is the Lord will see the test is in regard to, for example, whether the accused will stand his trial. It's not, does the state have a prima facie case, a strong prima facie case? The, ke the test is, is it more likely that the accused will stand his trial than uh, abscond? That's the test. And, and it is essential, my lord, 
that when one looks at an issue like bail, where it is effectively, my Lord, your Lordship will be exercising a value judgment, a value judgment which places on the one side of the scale or, or the one side of, 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 the, uh, of, of the scale, the interests of the accused as protected by the Constitution, and then, my Lord, the interests of, of protecting society against persons who are likely to commit crimes or have committed crimes, and to make sure that when a crime is committed, the person is brought to book. That's the delicate balance. So, my Lord, the issue really is that it is an overall discretion that your Lordship will exercise when taking all these factors into account, and they're not to be taken into account individually. And I say that, my Lord, because at the end of the day, if one adopted a knee-jerk reaction to the seriousness of the crime, then on that basis, just as a matter of principle, no accused charge with murder or with rape would get bail. By the same token, no accused charge or racketeering or money laundering involving large sums of money will get that. Now, that is necessary to put on the scale, my lord, not because it is something that your lordship needs to make a decision on, but in looking at these matters, your lordship is not required, my lord, to decide whether the accused is guilty or not guilty. And, 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 my Lord, I don't say it with disrespect. I say it on the basis that what one has in regard to the manner in which the state has presented its case in this bail application is a mini-trial that has been created so that the accused is required to be, or the, the, the applicants are required to be put on their defense. And I would respect, my Lord, that cannot be the purpose of a bail application. Because if the question of the guilt of the accused is before your Lordship, then at the end of the day, there will be no need for a criminal trial. Your, accused, uh, your Lordship will be entitled to make a decision on that issue. On the other hand, my lord, the question is not prima facie is the accused guilty. The question is, on the available evidence, does the state have a case which is likely to prompt the accused to abscond? That is the test, my lord, and, and I, 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 I submit with respect, my lord, the approach that has been adopted in these proceedings is, well, we will show you a document. If you don't respond to it, we will assume you don't have a response. Now, my, my Lord, may, may I ask your Lordship to look at the Gustavo judgment, and in paragraph 31 of that judgment, Mr. Justice who stays and said, it is true that the state supplied the court with numerous documents it intends. Oh, sorry, uh, paragraph 31, my Lord. Gustavo is on what page? Uh, Lord, I have a my Lord, I understand it's the second case in your Lordship's part. It's a third one. Lord, yeah, a pa paragraph thirty one, my Lord. Well, let me start with paragraph 30, my lord. Mm -hmm. Then the judge says, I am not convinced that the accused will be found guilty of all or some of the offences charged. It is common cause that I do not sit as a judge in the criminal case. I adjudicate on a bail application. In paragraph 31, the learned judge says, it is true that the state supplied the court with numerous documents it intends to use at the trial. It is also true 
that on some of those documents, the applicant was at pains to give a compelling explanation indicating innocence per se. But then it was not his duty. At the trial, the state will have the duty to prove that the accused is guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Now, your Lordship will recall that when Mr. Kanyangela gave evidence, I raised with him that the documents he was referring to were the documents that had been presented to the Gustavo Bell application, and he confirmed that it was the case. And that, with respect, my Lord, is the, the approach your Lordship should order. But what is the approach that I, I have to take? That your Lordship is not looking at the, the guilt of the accused and whether or not the accused have presented a defense in these proceedings is not an issue yes. that, um, that is central. Yes, I, I just want to, in, in, the, in the Gustavo matter, yes. in paragraph 31, yes. um, maybe that was the approach in Gustavo. Yes. But certainly that from what uh, I have been made to understand, that's not the approach of the state in this matter. Yes. The documents have not been presented for the purposes of the applicants to indicate their defenses or no defenses. What I have been made to understand is that these documents have been presented for the state to demonstrate what evidence is available for it yes. at the trial. Yes. Simple as that. No, no, I, I understand. Mark. Yeah. No. Except your lordship will see in the state's heads of argument, my lord. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they say, and, and I'll refer your lordship to the passage, that the applicants, especially the first three applicants, did not dispute any of that. And that is the purpose of my... Uh, the, the way I understand the, the, the state's arguments on those issues, um, it's more, it, with, with, with the abscondment, they, I, 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 I read those heads and I have understood. What I've understood the state to say is that we have placed this evidence or we have indicated that we will use this evidence. The first second and third applicants have not dispelled that evidence to indicate that they will not interfere. Not the strength of the state case and not the strength of the proven. That's how I have, I've understood the, 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 the defense case. Yes. But, my Lord, may I ask your Lordship to look at paragraph 31 of the state's heads? Now? Paragraph? 31. Now, your Lordship will see prior to that, they deal with a summary of the evidence given by Mr. Kanyangela in relation to the merits. Mm -hmm. And at paragraph 31, they say, the, the applicants one, two, three in this matter did not challenge the averments by the state, nor place their version regarding the Nongoma scheme in their affidavits. There was not even an attempt to challenge the evidence in the state's possession during the long ex uh, cross-examination of Mr. Kanyangela. That is the point I'm making, my Lord, that effectively, whatever they may have said, clearly, having drawn this conclusion, the purpose was to say, tell us what your version is. That's precisely what Justice Mohammed say, and that's what uh, Justice Ustazen says in Gustavo, that that is a question that must be determined by the trial court. <clears throat> now, Lord, but there, there, there is another point I want to make. Lord. The applicants, uh, the state through Mr. Kanyangela, presents 
his evidence to say this is the evidence of the main witness in the Nangoma matter, namely Mr. Stephenson. This is what he says, and, and that's what they say we didn't respond to at paragraph 31. But the issue in that case, my lord, is not what Mr. Stephenson says in his affidavit, and that's where this case is very different from other cases. Lord, may I, and, and again, just so that your lordship understands what my approach to this is, may I ask your lordship to look at paragraph three of the state's heads. This is how they justify the approach they have used. They rely, my lord, in paragraph three on the case of de Klerk versus the state. And in the middle, the learned judge there says that counsel for the accused says in bail, in bail proceedings, the state is not obliged to, oh, oh sorry, no, not counsel, but he says in bail proceedings, the state is not obliged to prove its case, uh, its case against the accused. All it needs to do is to show on a balance of probabilities that the evidence in its possession, usually in the form of witness statements and other documentary evidence, will prove the guilt of the accused. Now, that is always a proposition in bail applications. I, I, I have been suggesting that it is not a trial. So that approach is correct. But this, my lord, is where the difference lies where the learned judge then says, this is what the prosecution did in the present case. The, the investigating officer, warrant officer Havanga, narrated to court the nature of the police investigation. Lord, the nature of the police investigation. And the results of the forensic analysis done on samples collected on the crime scene and from the victim's body and that of the accused. Then the, then the judge continues. The results of these tests implicate the accused. The state is further in possession of two witness statements implicating the accused on the night on which the crimes were committed as, uh, were committed as regards him wearing bloodstained clothes and scratch marks observed on his neck. Now, the point I want to make, my lord, is it is easy in a case like you have an accused perhaps saying he wasn't at the crime scene and so on. And you have, a, you have forensic evidence saying but the accused is implicated in that. And then you've got witnesses. Now that's not the case here, man. What the state has cleverly done is to put Mr. Kanyangela in the box and say, look, he's Read this document into the record. Please read this document into the record. Most of the documents that they rely on, and Mr. Kanyangela says in the Nongoma matter, were supplied by Mr. Stephenson. Most of them, my lord, when you look at them, constitute communications between government agencies of Namibia and, and uh, uh, Angola or internal government communications about whether an MOU should be uh, 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 entered into or not. That is what is contained in the, the, the documents. But what they do then, my Lord, is to say, this shows that there is a syndicate at large. And whom do they rely on that for? Not on the documents. They rely on... Mr. Stephenson to come and say that. Now, the difference between this case and de Klerk's case, my lord, is that we say, and we've put to Mr. Kanyangela, but the Icelandic people have on oath said that Mr. Stephenson won't come and testify. On, on, on what basis can they say that? Well, my lord, he was unless they know, former employee. They, unless they know better than we know. Well, they put, but, 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 my lord, 
No, no. You see, Mr. Sony, you, you want me to accept what the Icelandic people are saying without putting the basis for, for, for what they have said? No. And why, why didn't they come to testify? So that they can be cross-examined. Um, they can be... They, 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 they are just expressing opinions. How do I... How am I bound by their opinions? But, 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 Lord, your lordship is not bound by their opinion. Yes. But what your lordship should take into account is this is what Mr. Kanyangela says in response to that. It isn't as if it was not put... No, Mr. Kanyangela in response says, Stephenson has committed to come and testify. It's That's what Kanyangela says. That was two Stephenson has committed to come and testify. That, 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 my lord, was two years ago. So, my lord, if, if one accepts everything Mr. Kanyangela says, my lord, and that his opinion is... is Binding on your lordship. No, 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 no. I'm, you see, I get bound by evidence. Even Mr. Kanyang, all that Mr. Kanyangela said is that Stephenson has committed to come and testify. Yes. Whether, whether he will come or not come will be seen on the day of the trial. And his basis of testifying that is that he was told by Stephenson himself. Now, all I'm asking is the Icelandic people who are actually have absconded from this court's jurisdiction. Yes. On what basis are they making that? They haven't even laid the basis on which they are making the statement that Stephenson will not come. But Unless we, they know much better than we don't know. No, no, my lord. But the, the, the point is not that Stephenson will not come. Mm. That's not the point I'm making. Part of the cross-examination of Mr. Mr. Kanyangela was to this effect, that you conducted a one-sided investigation. There are matters that were raised, and the Icelandics raised this in October 2021 in their opposition to the restraint application. It was put to Mr. Kanyangela, have you investigated that? And my Lord, his shocking answer is, I wasn't aware of it. Now, that's all I am saying, my Lord, that when one is assessing Mr. Kanyangela's evidence, that is a factor your Lordship must take into account. We don't say, therefore, the Icelandics must prevail, but we say there is a shadow over that very issue about whether or not Mr. Stephenson will come. But there are other issues that are raised about Mr. Stephenson. It is said that he has a drug problem. I, we, that's all I don't know. No, no, no. I, and, and, and I accept that, my lord. The, the, the question really, my lord, is that is evidence before, the, before this court in a separate application. This is in the restraint application. Now, with respect, my lord, we too are not in a position to look at that. Yes. But if your lordship is... Even if it was true, Mr. Mr. Son, even if it was true that Mr. Stephenson is a drug addict, he's a liar, how does that help me and assist me to determine whether the applicants will not interfere with witnesses? How does that help me to find and establish whether the applicants will stand their trial. That part of the evidence in no way will assist me to make that determination. Yes. Lord, um, what the purpose of all the evidence based on documents and what Mr. Kanyangela said is as follows. That we have a strong case based on the documents. The point I make, my lord, is, and it's a very simple point, we know there are 50-odd lever uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Sony, get, let me just guide. You, you, you know, when you started, I, I, I thought I would be 30 minutes with you and you'll be done. Yes. Because you, you cut to the meat and to the bone of the issue before me. Yes. 
and the issue is very very simple if I grant the applicants bail will the ends of justice be prejudiced full stop the, 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 that, that, that's the, the, that's oh, the oh, bottom line and, and if, 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 if I grant them bail and the ends of justice will be prejudiced I will, I will, I'll be forced to refuse bail yes no no if, if I the ends of justice are not likely to be prejudiced they are entitled not only as they are entitled to their release. Uh, that's the bottom uh, line. And, and with, um, Whatever Lord, has been done and said helps me in no way to make that determination. Uh, with, with respect, your lordship is absolutely right. I, I was merely dealing with the, the matters that were raised by yeah. the state. But let me deal with that issue. Mm -hmm. Lord, and again, Atchison is a very useful example. In Atchison's case, one had, and it is perhaps important to take oneself back 30 years ago. Mr. Atchison was a foreign mercenary who was accused of assassinating a Swapo hero. <coughs> and we, we're looking at just around the time of independence. If ever there was a basis to say a person should not get bail, it was in that case. But what Justice Muhammad did, my lord, is took himself out of the, the, the sort of noise, if I can put it that way, and brought himself into the applicable legal principles, as your lordship has correctly identified, that will the interests of uh, justice be prejudiced if bail is granted? Now, the question really is, have the applicants made out a case to say, I will stand trial, I will not abscond, and while well, they have said they intend pleading not guilty, whether that will be accepted is a different matter. But what Justice Muhammad did Lord is to look at how to balance the interests of the accused in that case Mr. Uh, Mr. Atchison with the concerns of society that here is a person guilty of an atrocious crime or accused of an atrocious crime, uh, uh, crime who is going to be let loose among society. And what the learned judge did then, my lord, is to say, well, two things happened in that case, and perhaps the background is important. The state asked for the postponement. That became irrelevant, but whatever the learned judge said in regard to the postponement comes back to the question of how long will the accused be in custody? And that was a central matter that, that Justice Muhammad did. And it is a central matter in this case. In Atchison's case, it was seven months. We are looking at 27 months. That's the first issue. We don't even know when the case is going to start. We know it's 338 witnesses. Now, the question really, my lord, is when one looks at the balance, and that's just cutting to the chase, as your lordship said, when one looks at the balance, can it be said that given the, these unknowns, and my Lord, one of the factors that Justice uh, Muhammad took into account in Atchison's case was the following, that it cannot be said that the accused in that case had contributed to the, to the delay. Nor can that be said here. That allegation has not been made. Now we know, my Lord, that no trial date has been set. We don't know how long the trial will last. And the question really is, does the, 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 the sacrosance which the Constitution places on liberty as articulated by Justice Muhammad in uh, Atchison justify the grant or, or the refusal of that? Now, one of the issues that 
Justice Muhammad looked at is, can this be met by sufficient, uh, sufficiently stringent bail conditions? Now, it is an approach also followed by Justice Ustazen in the in 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 in, in the yes. Gustavo matter. Mr. Sony, um, as I've said, you know, you I've read your heads. Yes. You are you are you are you are the parting point. You are starting point from the blocks was as I said, cutting through. It cuts. Uh, I have the advantage um, of having been a teacher of law. Um, yes, I'm, I'm yes. aware of that. I have that. And when I, I taught law, I always said to my students, the law, it's easy to find, it's easy to articulate. But the challenge and the difficulty always comes when you have to apply the law to the fact that faces you. Yes. And every, however similar cases are, there will always be a distinct diversion from. I have looked at your heads. I've looked at the evidence. I will be I'll cut to the bone and say, what, what bothers me in, in this matter? And I, I would want you to deal with it. What bothers me? Especially when it comes to the first, second, and third applicants. It's a very... There is testimony in this court. There is testimony in this court that there is an amount of four million US dollars. If one translates it into Namibian dollars, we're talking of about something like 60 million. That is still, now all that I want to know is if the applicants are released on bail, will we be able to, will, will just, the ends of justice be done? And that issue will be properly adjudicated in this court. Yes. Yes. If that can be addressed, one of my difficulties, the, all the other issues, I, 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 I know where to go. But the issue that has been bothering me it's, it's just a simple word. If there is funds that are beyond the jurisdiction of this court, if that is true, and the applicants are released on bail, what are the possibilities and probabilities of that being brought back and to be adjudicated in this court? Yes, yes. That, 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 that if you can deal with that, then... You, all the other issues, I've read the heads, I've read the heads of the state. Uh, I have at least a direction where I am going to move to. Lord, it is, uh, I, I, would n I would be disingenuous if I say that it's not a matter I've thought about. Mm -hmm. well. I mean, it, it looms large and your lordship has put, with respect, your lordship's finger on the right issue. Or, or one of the right issues. Mm. Let me just say this, Maru, that when one looks at how that issue arises in the evidence and in the papers of the 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 the, um, the state, Maru, what they say is there is information from Norway dealing with that very issue. And, and Lord, if your Lordship wishes, I'll, 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 uh, I'll show your Lordship where that is. Your Lordship, give me just one second, my Lord. I, as I said, it's not something that didn't occur to me when I read the uh, heads of my learned friends.
Yes. <clears throat> Lord, that is addressed at paragraph 16 of the state's heads, my Lord. <clears throat> says that Mr. Kanyangela, obviously relying on what had been said by Mr. Stephenson, testified that the Samaji group deposited 38 million rand into the uh, account of Nangoma, Pesca, Namibia, and only 9 million rand was declared as taxable income. Then he goes on, that's the issue that troubles my lord, says, Furthermore, based on information from Norway, documents provided show that 4.1 million US dollars was paid to uh, Tundavela Investment Limited, which is incorporated and registered in Dubai by second applicant as an extension of the scheme. Now, that is the, the evidence, or that is the information that is presented, my Lord. And no, again, my Lord, the question really is, we have an allegation that is made. The issue is, is your Lordship to decide whether or not that allegation is correct, or is your Lordship to decide, notwithstanding that allegation, is there a mechanism that will ensure that the ends of justice will still be met if the accused are released from that? And the question really at the end of the day is the extent to which, uh, because the, uh, the, the evidence has all been laid, my lord. The, the, the question really is, is there a mechanism by which that concern can be uh, addressed in the sense that if the accused have money elsewhere, uh, will they not abscond and use the money? And it's it's not not, I'm money. really not worried with the absconding. The question is, will the evidence with respect to that money be able to be put before this court? That, 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 will the court have... If, if, if that, you, with the, I'm not really worried with the yes. abscondment. Yes. But if, the, if, because this is what I'm saying, if that money is there, and remember the state's cases, the United Arab Emirates state is not giving its cooperation. Yes, yes. It's, 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 it's actually throwing spinners into the investigation. What, what is that? Is that? Isn't that also the interference with the presentation of witness evidences? Doesn't that go to those issues? Well, my, my Lord, what, what, what it establishes is the following, my Lord. Because the question really is, for that to be held against the accused, mm -hmm. for that $4 million uh, 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 sum of money that was deposited into that account, to be held against the accused, your Lordship would have to find that the state would be able to lead that evidence. And the question is, is, and, and I mean this is the issue that looms large, is it not actually placing a ransom on the accused to say, tell us what happened to the money, otherwise we won't release you on bail. And, and, and I mean, that, my Lord, is the issue. So what one has then is, what reliance can be placed on that issue for the purposes of denying bail. Lord, if there was, for example, a bank account in the name of one of the accused and, and your lordship would be confident that that would be the money that would, uh, would uh, uh, or, or that money was being used by accused number two or, or, and perhaps one and three, then the question really is, why has that evidence not been presented? That is, it, it is a central issue, as your Lordship points out. But one cannot have simply a, a statement saying, there's information 
from Norway that this happened. That with respect is not a basis to say, therefore, if the accused do not disclose this, they are not entitled to bail, because that will be a violation of the principle of, uh, of the presumption of innocence. Uh, yes, I, I hear you. Um. And, 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 and Malud, uh, uh, perhaps I should just give your lordship this assurance that it is not my contention that it is not an appropriate concern to have, or a valid concern to have. Let me put it as strongly as that. And, and as, as, as I said to you, my concern is not so much with absconding. Yes. My, my concern is simply with the affordability, you understand. Whatever one does, isn't that interfere? You, you, and remember what the, the crux to me is, the interferences with evidence. That, that, that's 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 a that's a biggest on, is particularly when it it, re, it regards this this amount of uh, whether you under, particularly if if one conceals, isn't that an interference with with with, with uh, testimony? But 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 that's on the assumption, my lord, that one is concealing. Yes, that's 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 real, and and I, and, and we back it at the real <laughs> number of the issue, my lord. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, and and I. I, 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 I accept, my lord. Now, perhaps I should just make this point, my lord, that assuming your lordship accepts everything that he said, that there is money there and so on, what one can accept is that the whole truth has not come out yet. But... That begs the question as to whether or not the state, because it is, it is and, and when one goes to the criminal trial, it is the duty of the state to prove it. They can't say, well, we have, uh, there is this, uh, a document from here and a document from there. At the criminal trial, they will have to prove it. And that is the issue that your lordship now faces. What is likely to happen at the criminal trial? And, and my lord, would, 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 uh, without going back into what your lordship says are almost irrelevant issues, that's one of the issues that will come up in regard to all the evidence that the state intends leading. Because documents don't speak for themselves. And so the question really is, when the state says it has a strong case, it it says it has a strong case based on A, B, C, and D. But in regard to this, they say, well, we just have these documents. Now, is that a basis, my lord, in, in essence? That is the issue before your lordship. Is that a basis to say that the state cannot prove this, so the, the, the accused must lie, in, uh, must, must remain in custody until the state is able to fathom this whole thing out. And I say this, my lord, for this reason. This investigation has been going on since 2014. We are now in 2022. If the state hasn't found that, the question is, does it serve the interests of society to keep the accused in custody while the, ser the, search, uh, the, the state continues its search which has not yielded any positive results for the last eight years. That, in essence, is the issue. And that's the balance your Lordship would have to draw in regard to that particular issue. Lord, the, 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 the issue that does not concern, uh, concern your Lordship about absconding and so on is, in a sense, a, a correct approach to adopt because it's not a question of is it possible and so on. Is there a likelihood that they, they will abscond? And with respect, my lord, the evidence doesn't indicate. So if that is your lordship's uh, query, my lord, the, 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 that is my answer to that query. And 
at the end of the day, my lord, uh, I, 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 I had intended, my lord, quoting something that your lordship said about the beauty of the law. Uh, and, and your lordship will remember it, I think, when Mr. Kanyangela was testifying. And, and your lordship articulated this in connection with these difficult cases. And that, in essence, my lord, is what your lordship would have to decide in the quiet uh, uh, evening hours in your study as to whether the accused can be penalised for exercising their right to remain silent. And, and we submit that that ought not to be done. Uh, the accused has a right, and, and secondly, my lord, the, 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 the right of the accused to be presumed innocent. Lord, uh, I, I hope I have, I, I'm not saying your lordship must accept, but I hope I have addressed the issue, not, not successfully necessarily, but uh, I, I don't want to, as your lordship says, let's get to the chase. Yeah. I don't want to deal with unnecessary issues. Everything else I've said is, is, is contained in, 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 uh, in our heads. There is one thing I would like to do, my lord, and perhaps I should do it after my learned friends for the state have, have uh, 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 addressed your lordship, and that's to address just some of the issues that arise in their heads. They may turn out to be irrelevant, and then I won't have to address them. Uh, I had intended uh, doing so now, but uh, unless there is something else that, that concerns your Lordship or that your Lordship would like me to address your Lordship on. No, my concern, I, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have raised it with you. Yeah, as, as my Lordship is. First of all, please. And also, maybe perhaps before I start, would it then best to ask whether or not there's questions that the court want me specifically to deal with as far as applicant number five and number six no. in order for us to address that particular issue? The, the onus is on you. It's not on me. That's the court case. <laughs> so you start and then I'll ask you. My Lordship, I believe also that my Lordship have received our heads as far as applicant five and six is concerned. Yeah. I've gone a little bit further than that and also attached uh, cases of which I think is also important in order for the court to make it at the end of the day that valid judgment that has been referred to. Mm -hmm. But what I want to do is that, and let's start off with page one of my heads of arguments where it basically deals with the issue in my introduction, the objections to bail. And I will only deal with that issues and if there's any other thing then I will also address my lordship on that particular point if I'm in a position to do so. But one of the biggest fear for the state is basically that applicant number five and six will not stand the trial and there exists a possibility that they would abscond. The same would apply that applicant five and six will interfere with police investigation as well as state witnesses. And 1.3, it will not be in the interest of justice or administration of justice if applicant number five and six be released. Then let's go to page two, paragraph five. It is now common cause before this court that indeed on the 14th of December 2020, while co-accused persons appear, then there was an announcement publicly that they also seek applicant number five and six to be added to this particular case. And then the following happened of which the court must take in consideration and that is on page three, paragraph six, where we make the following. Confident of the innocence, and more particularly to the Namibian courts, applicant number five and six, after they learn that they are also possible suspects in this particular matter, through the lawyer on record, make a call and inform the relevant authorities that they would be available on Monday, 21 December 2020, to the offices of the anti-corruption, although it was just four days before Christmas, they have done so. In keeping the word, they indeed report seven days after, as they have promised, from 14 December 2021, and they have been arrested the same day 
appear in court and since then is indeed in custody. Now, what is the purpose of the application for bail? I set out in the following paragraphs that basically... I, I hope you are not going to go with me through your... No, 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 not at all. Arguments. I will just stick to what is important. Mm. And then I must address the issue, what is the status of the criminal matter before my lordship? It is so that... I have no criminal matter before me. No, no, I refer to the matter, criminal matter, in terms of the status of that particular matter. The, the, the criminal trial. Indeed, sir. Okay. That's what I'm referring to. Before court, before the court. Before, before that particular court. court. Mm. It is so that that matter is postponed until the 12th of April 22, before Justice Miller, and there's already indications, indeed, there would be an interlocutory application. Now, why is that important? During cross-examination to the ACC officer, I asked that particular question as far as the witnesses is concerned. That will give us an indication how long <coughs> this particular uh, <coughs> trial would be. And with respect, I would say that at least between three and four years. Furthermore, and then the issue of why they have opposed bail, you testify to that. But what is important, let's then deal with the grounds more particular when it comes to applicant number five and six. And the two important issues, whether or not applicant number five as well as applicant number six would interfere with police investigation. The evidence before this court is that, indeed, the police investigation or the ACC testify before this honorable court whereby they informed us that the investigation is completed. Furthermore, it is also from the list of witnesses that most of this particular witnesses, it is indeed witnesses known to the state and they have made statements and that statement is under oath. Furthermore, there's also no evidence to suggest before this honorable court that applicant number five and applicant number says, the six is in any way can influence that particular witnesses. The reason why I'm saying so, and that is also conceded by the ACC officer, that statement is under oath. And there's no evidence before this court prior to the arrest, after the, the arrest, up to the point that they have received disclosure up to date that applicant number five and applicant number six had interfered or police investigation or with the witnesses. What is important for my lordship to take in consideration? Mr. 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 Engelbre, um, again, I will say the issues of absconding, I'm, I'm not really very much concerned. I would then also then... No, the I want to... I, I didn't know. I did not know until you cross-examined Mr. Kanyangela that while Mr. Nghipunya is in, 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 incarcerated, the Oti that was being referred to, who was a person making contact with a potential witness, is the fifth respondent. I also said that I addressed that particular issue. Yes. As far as that so, material... So, and he never dealt with that issue in his testimony. Yes. The reason... For, uh, let, me, let me address that particular issue. When applicant number five engaged the potential witness at that particular point in time, and that is my two points that I would make, he was not aware that that particular person is a, is a witness. Because at the time... He was not yet been arrested. Remember, he, he approached this particular person to try and influence that person to sign an agreement, and he approached him also to set up a meeting on the instruction, he said, of Mr. Nghipunya, who is arrested and who is in custody. My Lord, so my reading of paragraph 84.2 was basically just to the issue about financial assistance. And that is what it is in 84.2. No, 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 the approach was more than financial assistance. The approach was 
for an agreement to be signed. And you see, and that is why I was so, so concerned. And I said I was prepared to recall Mr. Nipunya to get him to the witness box for him to clarify that issue if it needs to be. Because to me, it pointed in a given direction. And also I would make the following yes. submissions. My reading of 48.2 and paragraph 49. Of what, is of what now? Of the statement. Which statement? The statement of Jose Ramos. Okay, uh, let me just have it. Um, it's annexed here, what? I exhibit what? Okay, can you assist us, Mr. Litubetsu? What exhibit is it? Uh, you know, see, what I have marked is Z23. Is that is that the X Z exhibit? Yes, it's it will be on that one. Jose Ramon Canaso Camon, eh? Yes, my lord. Yes, paragraph? 48.249 and paragraph 50 is the last page of that particular statement. If I go to paragraph 40. Paragraph 40 of that statement. And also, unfortunately, I have not been disclosed the full statement. How can you say that today, Mr. Indeed, so I have made. We have gone. We have been here for more than eight weeks. Indeed, my lord, sir. <coughs> and you that don't have a document, and you are making submissions on a document you have not seen. That particular document is in, in possession of the of my senior who was dealing with that particular issues, and of which he but will. But you address. are making submission in respect of that document. And you haven't seen the full document? My Lord, I, I'm referring to 48.2 and 49. No, I'm, and I'm referring you to where it starts. It starts at paragraph 40. Can I just have a, a copy, then I will also address that particular issue. But I will come back to I will make a note, and I will address my Lord on that particular score. I would not run away from it. Okay. You can run away. Indeed, my Lord. <laughs> I also was referring to paragraph 50. Four, four zero. Four zero. During October to November 2019. Mm -hmm. On that particular score, during that time, applicant number six was not yet been arrested. Mr. Nikopunya mm -hmm. called me about the consultancy fees agreement that he wanted Nova Nam to sign for consulta consultant consultation fees and he rendered. There is what 40 said. Go to paragraph 41. But then we told me that agreement would, would offer him and Nova, Nova Nam a form of safety. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, I, I was, what I was trying to tell you is that Mr. Nipunya, the contact that Mr. Nipunya did with Mr. Canosa was not only for payment, but it was also for the signing of, a, of, of an agreement. That was what I was conveying to you. Yes, but when it comes to my client, applicant number six, his involvement. Remember the, the contact started earlier, and your client was then the conduit, now the, the middleman.
Yes, if, if you read the whole paragraph 48, from 40, actually from 40 to 48, then this is what I said to you. Um, until you cross-examined, I wasn't aware that the OT who is being referred to is accused num uh, is applicant number five. But also, I cannot recall whether or not I was the one that was dealing with the cross-examination. No, no, it's you. It's from your cross-examination. It's you who actually revealed the identity of who Oti is. Okay. But, my Lord, I would make the following submission. Yes. And I would stick to what I have said is that as far as the involvement of applicant number six, we make the submission. Who's, who's number six now? That's Mr. Oti, referring to Oti. Oh, okay. And that is the client of which I'm standing before my lordship. Okay. His involvement, yeah. according to my understanding of the reading of the papers, was in order for financial assistance. So as far as applicant number four is concerned, Mr. Patella would come and deal with that particular issue. My lordship, let's then go back to the issue at hand. I've told you what my concern was. Yes, my lordship. All the other issues, I've read your heads, I've read the heads of the state, but my Lord, I, 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 I want, you see, once you disabuse me of, 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 a, of an issue, that makes my work, my, my work very simple. Either I am with you or I am not with you. Okay, my Lordship. My Lordship, can I just in conclusion make a follow-up? Yes. And that would be the issue, although this issue, that is the issue of if my Lordship is with me and I don't know whether or not the Lordship would be with me, then would, at the end of the day, it would be whether or not the accused person can afford bail. And that is why I address more particularly in paragraph number I, 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 on, the, on the issue of... Well, I also had this question. What, what is the significance of, of an amount? If a pass, if, if you, to me, if you are not going to abscond, if you are not going to to interfere with the witnesses if the ends of justice would not be prejudiced. Why must you give me 200,000? Well, that I'm with my lordship because I have to address the issues up to point. Well, why must uh, I put $200,000 as a bail condition? Yes, the court places. My lordship, based on these few submissions, the, our heads of argument... No, you haven't answered the question yet. I beg your pardon, which, which one is still outstanding? No, the one I'm raising. The issue is that, and that is the issue that has been dealt with in the case of S versus Panero, but certain requirements have been laid out. And why is this important in this particular matter, and why I'm raising the issue is on twofold. Applicant number five and applicant number six inform this honorable court that, more particular, they are currently unemployed or they are suspended. And in the no, you see, you know why I'm raising this issue. If you have listened to Mr. Sony, who appeared for the first, second, and third applicant, his issue was simply there will be no abscondment, there is no threat of abscondment. There will be. He never ever suggested even an amount. You see, because if that is available, the amount is irrelevant. There's the court places. So when you offer me 200000 or 50000 what is it that you are conveying to me? In order to convince the court that indeed we will come back and stand our trial and whoever... With money. I can lose 200000 any day. Okay, I'm not, some of us are not in that lucky position. No, no, I'm not meaning me, literally. <laughs> I'm not speaking... When I speak, I don't speak on me of my person because I'm not part of the process. My lots of that would be our submissions on behalf of <laughs> applicant number five and six. <laughs> As far as the head of arguments is concerned, my lord. All right. That's the court cases. All right. All right. Um, having had Mr. Sony and Mr. Engelbrecht, and taking into account the arrangements that we have had, um, we may take an adjournment until when we get an indication as to when Mr. Patella is available, so so that Mr. Patella then also makes his submission, and only then will the I I don't want um, the. The, the applicant's case, then the state, and then back to the applicants again. Mr. As, as, as my Lord pleases, that, that, that appears to be uh, uh, the appropriate approach. Okay. So as soon as <coughs> Mr. Patella is available, just alert me, and then we will reconvene. I will also as assist the court to see whether or not I will get hold of him and ask how far. Then yeah, I'll no, no, you don't have to look for him. 
because he's an officer of this court. He knows we are waiting for him. He's in another court. Um, That's the court. As soon as he contacts you, let just alert me. I will do so. All right. Court will rise. Aye.